Replit 3 was just released, and I'm definitely including this in my workflow from now on. I'm a UI UX designer who doesn't code, and Agent 3 to me is the most advanced AI solution to build fully functional products without being a developer. Honestly, it's on a league of its own right now. I'll show you how you can go from planning and UI design to building and launching a complete product, all with Replit. It's great for prototyping and for securely building production-ready apps. Hi, my name is Jad. On this channel, I bring you the best ways to build products with AI. I've been waiting for so long for a breakthrough to come along for AI coding tools. And here we are. Replit just made a huge leap for people like me. No more fighting with AI to explain what I need or to fix errors or simply to make my app work, let alone implementing a database correctly and launching the app. Agent 3 does it all. It's extremely user-friendly for non-developers. It prompts you at every step where it needs intervention in a very easy way. And it plans the project visually before it starts building. This way you make sure that the requirements align with your vision before it's too late. And that's a huge point because I faced this problem a lot when I was dealing with AI coding tools where it starts building immediately and then any changes would have huge repercussions on the code. Agent 3 builds like a real human. A real human would clarify the requirements before writing the code and that's exactly what it's doing. Plus, it automatically tests the project and fixes bugs so it never just leaves you hanging with an error for you to deal with. Today, I will build a complex app so that you can join me in all the steps that it takes to make it work. You'll see what features I'm using for each prompt and how problems are now very easy to solve. I'm just too excited about this. Let's dive in. I'm building an AI-powered tool that takes an idea and expands its features, then creates a flowchart, and finally creates a sitemap, all with AI at every step. And Agent 3 will figure out how to implement all of these AI features to make it work seamlessly. All right, here I entered an idea to start. I want to create an app that lets me plan a UI UX project visually. I'll submit the prompt, and this is the phase that I love. You'll notice that at the top, you have the planning phase. This is super important. It will come up with a plan here, and I can either edit the plan or start designing, or tell it to build the full app. Now, building the full app immediately will work if you have a very detailed prompt and if you know exactly what you want. Otherwise, start with the design so you can iterate. And starting with the design is perfect for me because that means it will start building the UI without the back end. That way, iterations will be easier to implement. So if you've been working on planning this project and you have everything figured out, you can go for the full build. But I love having the option to ideate and plan right from within Replit. That means I don't have to plan my project with ChatGPT in text format anymore. I can immediately start with Replit and figure out the best solution visually. Once you start a project, you can see all the new features you have in Replit now. You can enable or disable app testing, which means do you want Agent 3 to autonomously test your app using a virtual machine? Then you have the high-powered mode, which will give you better detailed outcomes but costs more. I'll leave this off until I have a complex request that I want the agent to solve. But for now, leaving this off is the way to go. Then under other, you can see here you have max autonomy. I tried this on a previous project and it was amazing, but very expensive. So be careful when turning on this feature. It tells the agent to keep working until the full project is complete. So it can keep going for more than three hours, building and testing and iterating all on its own. So only use this when you have a complex or large project that needs a lot of calculations or when you're stuck and you want the AI to take over the rest of the project. This will also perform best if you have a very detailed prompt because it will make a lot of decisions on its own. So if you have a detailed prompt, you will guide how the agent will take over the rest of the project. If you don't have a detailed prompt, it will make its own decisions and you might not like it. When I tried it, it spent $16 to complete the project on its own and it took like an hour and a half without me touching anything. But yeah, definitely keep this off for regular use. Okay, so just by entering that initial prompt, I'll show you what Replit Agent 3 here came up with. It added the app type and the integrations and all of the features that I'm going to need for this app. And then it went on to build the UI. So you can see here there's more steps that I went through, all of this to build the UI and the components and the schema. And after that, you can see here, there's 28 more steps that I went through and you can see everything that it did. 
all on its own. And then it gave me a result and it's telling me what it built and where we are in the project. And before we continue, it's giving me the option right within the chat interface to enter my Anthropic key. I love how it's integrated within the chat. I can just hit continue and it will implement my API key. And at the end, it's giving me two options. Do I want to continue building the functionality or do I want to keep iterating on the design? Now to be able to test the app, I'm going to start with adding my Anthropic key and then I'll see if I want to iterate on the design or if I like the design, I can start building the functionality. Beautiful work from Agent3 here. I'll hit continue and let's test the app and see if uh, it's working properly. Let's see here. We have AI features, user flows, sitemap, and settings. So it separated the phases into tabs and the sidebar. I'm not sure I like this uh, navigation style because I want these to be phases of the same workspace, not different tabs. Keep iterating on design. Okay, so I entered my comment here. I said I don't want this to be in the sidebar. I want I want the user to be working in the same workspace and transitioning between phases. Okay, now it made some adjustments. It gave me the new phased workflow. And then it's asking me if I like this and if I want to proceed or edit anything just like before. So I'm going to test the UI now. And I already see that it changed the sidebar to workspace, then projects and settings, which makes much more sense to me. Okay, so here I can see that I can start with the project idea and there's a progress bar at the top. I can enter my project info here. So I'm going to say travel web app. So I entered a bunch of details for a travel app and I'm going to say stock project. Describe your app and let AI expand it into detailed features. So I thought that we already explained the app here. So let's let's try it out and see if this is this is a necessary field to fill out or not i'm just gonna say travel app i don't want to type everything again i'm just testing the initial iteration here i'll say generate features and there we go it went into the user flow phase so it seems like it's generating features and then jumping into the user flow immediately i want to be able to see those features so i'll just say keep iterating on design Okay, so we have a user flow, an interactive canvas here where you can add a start, a process, a decision, and an end. And if I say next, I can see here the sitemap, and it's nice how it's laying out the sitemap visually. And then if I hit next, I can see I can export to PDF or save the project or start a new project. I like the last two steps, but let's just start with the second step here to expand the features. And here within the chat, this is amazing. You can see how it's actually using the interface to test it. So this agent three will go through your developed app and it will test it like a real user. So it will go on and to fill the fields and go through step by step using the app as if it was a real person. That way it will automatically know if something is wrong, it will fix it without me doing anything. It will just do everything on its own and it will keep going until it resolves all the issues that came up with testing. And all of this is happening in the sidebar. This is a very rich sidebar that includes multiple different types of components for you to interact with or to monitor what it's doing. So here it's saying it is going through the suggested features in the second phase and approving and tweaking others. So this is exactly what I wanted, but it's just testing it before I get to test it. And finally, it's asking me if I like the design or if I want to improve anything. Let's test it. Okay, now in the second phase, it's giving me a list of suggestions that I can go through and approve, edit, or reject each idea. Beautiful. Okay, this one is in. So it says here approved. Now here it says continue to user flows or next. So I'm not sure which one I should click. That's a problem. So let's see if I click continue to user flows. That doesn't do anything. So I'll go to next and there it works. Okay, so I gave it some comments on phase three and phase two here. For phase two, there's an extra button that I don't need. And for phase three, I don't really know how to use this. So I want to make it more user friendly and more clear visually in terms of the flow and the steps of the app. And I'll submit this prompt to iterate further on the UI before we get to the back end and everything else. Okay, it made the changes now. Let's see if it's working. So when I reject an idea, it gets faded and then I have one button here so that's that's working 
And when I click next, now I have a visual canvas, which is beautiful. I can add a new node here, but I cannot drag and drop. And it doesn't seem like it's using AI to figure out the flowchart here. So I need it, I need this flowchart to reflect my features. Okay, this is uh, more into the functionality side. I'll leave it as is now because the design looks good. Here we have a sitemap which is beautifully displayed in the UI. I like this. I'll leave this as is. So far, so good. Now let's move into building the functionality and making everything work. So all I got to do here is click on build functionality and see what Agent 3 will do on its own. Okay, now it went on to work for 25 minutes all on its own. It did some testing and it implemented all of the features and it seems like the app is fully working now. It says the app is complete and functional. I don't know if that's real, let's test it out. In this phase, I still need the ability to add my own features and the suggestions are not enough for me, I need more. And when I approve one, the rest are getting deleted. Okay, so we have some issues here, I'll note them down. Okay, that's the first problem. Let's continue to the next phase. And here, I should be able to select and move, but it's still not working. I can add new items. I can select items. But I cannot control the arrows and the drag and drop. All right, so we still had a few things to fix here. I'm going to enter all of my comments and see what it will come up with. I'm fixing two things here, one in the AI features phase and one in the user flows phase. I want them both to work and agent three should be able to take care of everything. Another cool feature they have here is after each time the agent stops working, it will give you a summary of how many minutes it worked and how many actions it took, how much code has changed, which is really nice to see. Okay. It completed the work in 10 minutes and now it's saying that phase two and phase three are functional as I intended. And it also fixed the drag and drop functionality. Let's check it out. Okay, that's perfect. Now it's giving me more suggestions and it added a custom feature button at the end. And I was able to add a custom feature, which is nice. I feel like here I need the ability to generate more features with AI. So I need a button at the top that will refresh the generations and it should keep the approved features. Okay, I added a few features here just to be able to test the next step. And there we go. Now it's pulling my features from phase two and bringing them to phase three in the flowchart here. But the drag and drop is still not working for the flowchart elements. I'm going to prompt with my comments again. Okay, I entered my comments here. For phase two, I want to be able to generate more ideas with AI. And for phase three, I want to be able to interact with the canvas to zoom and pan and connect items. And that's still not working properly. I feel like it's been challenging for the agent to make this work. So I'm gonna try and select high power model because this is a complex app with interactions and drag and zoom. So I feel like a high power model should be able to resolve this issue. I'll turn it on. And it says here high power will cost five times more. So if you can afford it and if you have a complex app, maybe you should try this. But since I already tried it twice and it didn't work, I feel like I need to use the high power model here. It is a complex app. Okay, now it's done. It worked for eight minutes and you can see the breakdown of what it did here. It took 25 actions, over 1000 lines of code. And here it's showing me the breakdown of the agent usage. It totaled $10 to make everything work. And then there's a breakdown of what it did. Let's see if this was worth it. Okay. Now we have the generated features and there's a generate more features at the top here. Let's see if I approve. And now the other features are not getting deleted. So everything is perfect so far. Let's see what happens if I hit generate more features. Crucially, it kept the ones that I approved and it added more at the bottom. Beautiful. Let's go to the next phase. Now we have more tools in the toolbar here at the top. We can zoom which is nice. Okay, now we can see the whole canvas here. Let's see if we can drag. Yes, we can. And the arrows will follow the item, which is good. So if I scroll, it will zoom out, which is nice. And if I hit space bar, the pan will work. So the shortcuts are working beautifully. Phase three is working. I still have some issues with selecting nodes 
and connecting nodes. And then I need to make phase four for the sitemap to work reflecting the user flow. Okay, so I decided to switch from a flowchart to static user journeys because this is an AI powered tool that I'm building and I don't want too much interaction and I want the AI to generate the results with minimal editing. So I decided that the user should be able to edit the features and then the AI will take over to create the user journeys. So I said, let's have a Kanban style UI where each path is laid out vertically and you can see how many paths there are for the user journey. That makes the app simpler and easier to use. And then I went on to make the sitemap functional as well to create a sitemap based on the user flows. And now let's see how it works. Let's approve some features here and move on to the next step. And there we go. Based on the features that I selected, now I have two user flows. And if I select more features, it will analyze them and it will add more user flows. And now if I click next, it says it's generating the sitemap. And there we go, it generated the sitemap based on my user flows. And now if I click next on the sitemap, I will arrive to the final step of the project where I can export a PDF or save my project. There we go, it's testing again. And sometimes you might find that the agent is very slow because it's actually going through and thinking about each step. So it might be slow at testing, but you can always click this button here to skip the test. And that way you can just test it on your own. But in some instances, the testing is essential because it goes through and tests everything so that it can figure out what's not working behind the scenes. It will click through everything and then it will check the logs to figure out what's not working. But in this case, it did all the changes and it's just going through the final test to make sure that everything is working. You can see what it's doing here all on its own. It's filling out the fields and, and it goes through the app step by step. But anyway, my project is now complete. And now I can use this app for every project that I want to start. So with Replit, you can create a tool that will help you with your work or with your task or productivity, or you can even publish your app and start making money from it. All right, let me show you a few extra features in Replit that are very helpful. First of all, don't forget to manage your theme. You have a theme button at the top right here. It's really helpful because you get a lot of control over the UI, like fonts, colors, and corner radius. And these are really detailed, so you can create your own theme here or import a theme, or you can publish your theme to, uh, to the theme library. You can see different themes here, which is really nice. And for working with the database, Replit has the best solution I've seen so far. It implements a database automatically, and you can manage it from within Replit, so you don't have to connect to an external third-party database. You can see at the top here that you have another tab for database. If you click on that, you can see your development database here, and here it will show you all of the contents and the columns and the tables of your database, and you can also check out your data and your settings. Everything you need to work with a database is included within Replit. But if you want to implement a third-party database, all you have to do is ask the chat to implement an external database, and it will tell you everything you need to know. And lastly, if you want to publish your product, all you have to do is click on the Publish button at the top, and here is super easy. Just follow the prompts on the screen and your product will be live on the web so anyone can use it. And at the top, you can switch between tabs if you want to keep working or if you want to manage your database or if you want to publish. They have a really nice tab system at the top. Okay, that was great. You can see how it never gave me an error, even though my project was very complex. I had to tell it to fix certain interaction issues, but crucially, I never got stuck. The agent responses were very accurate, the planning was a breeze, and it implemented a database properly all on its own. You can really feel the power that this brings to building products. It behaves like a real developer. I know from my experience working with teams, Replit Agent 3 does the same thing that developers do. Like when they test the app and check the console, this is doing the same thing. It's checking the console to figure out what's happening with the usage. Crazy stuff. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll answer everything down in the comments as usual. And now, let's get back to work.